so happy to be here and today uh, to be here with you, Katharina Sieverding, and you, Paula Sieverding, and you, uh, Katharina. I think you all know. I hope I think you know them both. But Katharina is a world famous artist. Uh, she it focuses on the medium of photography, film, and video. And since 40 years, she has been working in this medium. And uh, she has been studying with uh, Joseph Beuys and um, also representing Germany at Venice Biennial together with Gerhard Merz in 1997. And uh, you immediately attracted attention with your work to radically um, putting your uh, putting your self-portrait in, into the center of the, of the work. And um, then the series that followed, the cycles that followed became more and more politically. Uh, they de dealt with atomic, uh, the atomic catastrophe or the mad cow disease, etc. cetera. And uh, Paula, you are one of the most promising multimedia artists of the younger generation. And you also work in the, in the medium of photography, film, and video. And uh, your work uh, centers or focuses on the, on cultural, on the diversity and ver variety of cultural codes of cultures, of global cultures and subcultures of today to be very uh, short in, <laughs> in the beginning. And um, what is interesting as well, you have been, or you are currently uh, working as an artist in residence in politically virulent uh, regions like Ramallah or Belfast. Okay, so let's start with the first question, Katharina. Um, thank you. <laughs> when did you know, Katharina, you would become an artist? And what does it mean to you until today? Um, yes, first, um, it was a long process, uh, and uh, so it was not spontaneous or uh, from one day to the other. Mm -hmm. First, I studied medicine. Um, I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could know from my work. Uh -huh. Yes, you are right. And attitude. <laughs> you are right. <laughs> And um, then uh, I studied theater, and I was uh, also very early collaborating with um, uh, very famous directors. One example was uh, Fritz Kochner. So uh, I was here at the Münchner Kammerspiele. Uh, this was um, uh, a piece by um, Gombrowicz, Die Trauung. But uh, as everyone in Munich knows, he was a very complicated and um, director with very high uh, demands. So uh, it was never, uh, it never came to um, a real performance. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he asked me to collaborate with him in, um, in Vienna, in the Bock Theater. Okay. And uh, that was in uh, 64. So, um, yeah, then I did several other productions and um, came to Düsseldorf. Uh -huh. uh, and um, then I met uh, Boris, and so he was really uh, asking me for uh, many months to come into his class. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, then I had to, I had to really decide, uh, and that was in summer 67 after Salzburg. Summer 67, we will come back to this uh, time, which is such a, has been such a, a revolutionary time then. But first, Paula, um, when did you know that you wanted to become an artist? And why? If there, how would you explain? Um, it was, I was actually into acting before I started to study art. Um, and it's funny because I never thought about it that we have more in common than we actually, uh, mm -hmm. than yeah. I thought about mm -hmm. that you've been in theater and I was in acting school. 
Um, but after a while, I figured out that I'm um, much more interested in um, the, let's say, um, the stage in terms of culture. And that was basically the point where I started to switch into um, doing videos and, and photographies, and that eventually led to, to the art school. Have there been discussions in the family as you are the daughter, the, the eldest daughter of, a very, uh, of two very artistic parents as your father, Klaus Mettig, is, one, is a video multi multimedia pioneer? Have there been discussions about... Uh <laughs> um, we discuss a lot, but it's never been a discussion whether... I should or I shouldn't um, try to become an artist, but um, yes, there are a lot of discussions about what each of us is doing content-wise or like uh, what we are interested in, but it's never been, we never discussed uh, the, the point. point. Yeah, so it was not a topic at all. No. Yeah. Um, I can add, uh, so I did a, um, an, I did a lot of um, teaching in, um, in Asia and uh, Eastern Europe and also Salzburg and um, so I had to manage with three children to be there so when they were very young I took them with me and um, so sort of um, day by day they uh, experienced um, this um, uh, teaching process and practice with uh, young people and I think maybe this was uh, also some uh, inspiration or some uh, uh, connection to this profession. Yeah, I think because they grew up with it, it was yeah, what yeah. kind of normal to them as your, your sons, your two sons, Orson and Osip, they, the one is already an artist, no, more, more a mus musician. And the other one has become a carpenter. So <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a... Yeah, yeah, but I think it was not a narrow family thing. Uh, mm -hmm. So it was uh, as uh, how we were moving and doing things. So when there was a chance, we, uh, they accompanied us. And so it was more, I think, this whole process of communication with uh, younger generations. Um, so photography, video and film are the media you both work with. When you started, Katharina, you have been one of the pioneers of artists' photography in Germany. Uh, which aspects of the medium have been fascinating to you? Why did you choose this medium? And <coughs> yeah, again, I start with uh, uh, 67. Uh, that was the moment when I was still working um, in Salzburg in the Zau uh, Zauberflöte and Magic Flute. Yeah. And um, then I heard about uh, all these uh, riots and the, the rebellions and um, demonstrations in Germany. And in that summer, I decided. Um <coughs> I really uh, quit with the theater and all this um, sort of hierarchical uh, world, in especially in Salzburg. And I went back to Dusseldorf and then started to be in the class of uh, Josef Beuys to participate in uh, all these discussions and uh, also to, um, I started then with photography to document these, uh, these um, demonstrations and the whole uh, performances, happenings, and so on. And uh, so I could, um, I could work visually and I could uh, participate. And also I published these uh, photographs um, uh, overnight. Uh, I developed them and then published them at the wall of the academy so that everybody could um, uh, sort of participate and uh, look at it. So this, this um, I think this was a very, very important moment, how to uh, not to be uh, alone in your studio and uh, do some uh, creations, but to uh, be uh, in the public and uh, to um, 
to work with the camera and to be a testimony of uh, what you really fight for. <coughs> yeah, so your work from the beginning has been like a dialogue, like, like a, a sort of interactive. Um, and the main questions, and in this, you would, s of course, say your work is a uh, would uh, a, polit a political one. Uh, because, I mean, it's a, for you it means <laughs> it's important uh, to, uh, to deal with reality in this way. I mean, to see it uh, politically. Um, <coughs> because then you also started with cycles who were political, which were political. I think then at that time, um, uh, starting with the media, um, like film, video, or photography. So <coughs> you were sort of prepared, or you prepared yourself completely different. And uh, I stop with um, also these conventional uh, disciplines like painting and sculpture. So you you immediately came into another shift of um, uh, critical theories about film and uh, so on and so on. Uh, and um, so it was also then a um, real political um, uh, engagement that we founded, some people from the boys class, we founded this film class at the Academy in Düsseldorf in the late 60s. So, and we, uh, we had a, a theoretician from Cologne, uh, Albrecht, and uh, so we, we sort of had a completely broader field uh, than um, this monopolism of modernism. And, um <laughs> and uh, so, I mean, um, I think that media art um, uh, is uh, in general always uh, political, yeah. Yes. Or, Paula? Um, yeah, Paula, what do you mean? <laughs> How do you see it? What is... Um, I think if you don't understand the political as a means of governing conflicts. The political is very much um, a question of context because of course a work can be political because of uh, the content um, and because it might may need the text and because it's not only uh, a formalistic or a static um, uh, work but also such a work can be in a, like a, a non-political work can be in a political context, um, become political. So I think it's a constant um, Shifting. A process, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yes, let, let's speak about Ramallah and your experiences then. I mean, was it, it they might have influenced your work or maybe you started a new cycle. Could you t tell us more about I've been invited to Palestine um, in 2008, the first time as an artist in residence. And I've been there again this year in uh, spring to teach at the academy in Ramallah, which is a very young academy. Uh, they just right now have their first graduation show. Um, and the idea there was very much to, to figure out um, a notion of artistic research and whether that um, is any different than than research in, in general. And basically what I've done is uh, very much um, continuing my interest in, in performance. Um, I was researching about image production in, in Palestine and there especially the performative aspect. And as it's been the beginning of protests that, of course, were are connected to to the Arab, so-called Arab uh, Spring, um, and these protests, wherever they are, they all sort of need an image to to communicate or to be the icon of that revolution. And so I was working very much about that: how um, this visual representation that protest or, or revolution um, was constructed by the young people who were demonstrating um, 
did you photograph, did you do a series with uh, the people, like po a portrait series, or did you, did, did already, is there new work, new body of work we could look at uh, later, maybe? I am still working on an installation which will consist of film uh, or video material and, and still photography, um, and which will try to focus on the question of vi visual representation or image construction a little bit more in general, which is quite interesting in that place anyway, because it's a highly political area, and of course images are um, excessively used to, to communicate or to bring across your um, idea of, of uh, your political um, viewpoint. Um, but uh, I'm still working on it, basically. Yeah. And Katarina, um, this panel deals with the issue of authenticity. And I think in your work it's a central topic as well. So, <laughs> um, how would you define authenticity? Um, yeah, I, I, um <coughs> it's, a, it's a complicated question because I'm not dealing uh, so much with authenticity, right? Because I think um, uh, I'm, more, I'm more dealing with the construction of uh, identity and whether this is authentic or not. Uh, so I think this uh, is a question, but um, I mean, even the, the whole uh, debate or discourse about identification or identity is, um, so it's a sort of uh, um, no more that actual. I think that um, um, what, what today interests me and what, uh, how I started with uh, these sort of questions means that uh, I started, of course, with uh, these self-portraits and with these big um, um, interfaces of um, my face. And, uh, but uh, I mean, I never was interested that uh, everyone knows, ah, yeah, th that's her or, or this. Um, so I, from the very first uh, moment, I tried to break um, with this uh, idea or this uh, problem of authenticity, but. Um, maybe um, I try to construct um, the question. So I, I, I can maybe say I can uh, support this question and the question that everybody has, uh, especially today in between analog and digital worlds. And I think this is also issue of this uh, conference here. So, um, um, and I've m I, th I think in this complexity of questions, I sort of did a uh, did a um, um, tribute to um, uh, some issues, how you as an individual um, human being, how you um, uh, move or how you, um, yeah, how you, how, what you, are, what sort of. Um representation, so sort of yeah. representation of yourself, like in different roles and masks or in different uh, like it became very, very familiar now. I mean, we all uh, play different roles. We all have different images of and of ourselves and of representation, representing ourselves. So, I mean, like Madonna or Lady Gaga, this is now uh, a very, very common thing. Uh, and I think it changed the the way of self-perception and. Maybe you have been dealing with these issues uh, very early. Yeah, but I'm always questioning these uh, phenomena. And um, um, so, yeah, maybe Paula. Paula, yes. maybe you have your own <laughs> perception of this issue of authenticity and identity or doesn't it matter to you at all? Well again I think um, 
authenticity very much happens in the um, tension between inten intention and perception. So as the political authenticity can matter, but it's, I don't really consider it to be a fixed um, entity. So, you know, although your intention might be authentic, I could perceive it totally uh, differently. Um, but I think it's, it's within identity processes, it definitely is a question that is uh, important to, that you ask yourself. At what point uh, did you figure out, although it, it might only be temporal, um, your role for it, and even it's only for today? Yeah, did you ever have something like an identity crisis to you no. both? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's quite normal to have one. I have, I've had many. I'm asking you both. Okay, no, no, I, um, um, because I'm uh, not so much uh, hustling for these um, big things like authenticity and uh, identity. So I'm, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm. It's a, it's a research project for me. So uh, I'm not uh, getting that much into a crisis because um, I think there. Are there are um, more complex um, uh, points in my life that interest me, that is uh, life and death in general. And uh, so it's, um, this masquerade and all these things are um, uh, sort of... Um, Am amusing you, <laughs> boring you? No, it's it's part of the performance, of course, and uh, you do it. But I mean, behind this is, I think, a bit more. And um, um, I think any uh, successful uh, performers um, they do it. But um, I think it's not only what you know the masquerade is like. And uh, but um, uh, uh, I think um, the if you do it as an artwork. Um, so it's a broad uh, field uh, for um, uh, to um, connect uh, with other disciplines of um, identity and uh, authentic authenticity, and so it goes into other fields and other other disciplines. And uh, I think um, everyone has to deal with this. And uh, so you you live. Uh, you I think you 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 have multi. Uh, authenticities to uh, create or to uh, perform every day. You are right, yeah. I think that's, and, and you have to handle it, and sometimes it's, it's easier, and sometimes sometimes it's a bit <laughs> more difficult <laughs> for three. <laughs> no, but... Um, um, how do you manage your artist's profession and private life, Paula? Um, I am very lucky to have not only a, a family family, but also a, a wonderful production family, I would call it, which is that all of my work is very much um, dependent on um, my relationships in terms of like my friends, my, my brothers as well. I also, I just did a um, sound performance with my brother, but also my partner is an artist, and um, so we all sort of like help each other out and and sort of like concentrate on who's next or who's whose deadline is the next, basically, and um, then the next deadline is uh, you know all the others concentrate on that. That's great because it sounds like uh, like being a family business in a way, as you. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> productions are, um, are being, pro uh, productions are happening in your studio in Düsseldorf? Uh, um. Yeah, sometimes, or in Berlin, or wherever. Uh, I mean, production is also, it's not only a, a laboratory work, you know, but... Um <coughs> <coughs> uh, I think um, I think uh, having 
taught for nearly 20 years now, s now uh, many, many young generations. Uh, I think this uh, is uh, something that um, is a cooperation and uh, makes it maybe um, for me a very um, important issue to work with in the field of um, so-called fine arts and um, or media art, or I mean arts, uh, really uh, that there exists uh, a constructive heritage. Because uh, I think uh, in, um, in the performing arts or in sound or music, it's uh, easier. I think that uh, especially the fine arts are really uh, a bit back uh, in, in terms of uh, constructive heritage. And uh, so it's, um, it's a, I think it's a very interesting process. It's because we deconstruct the male geniusness and uh, all this, and I think uh, that, uh, that there are more uh, female artists uh, um <coughs> um, um, working and uh, publishing. <coughs> so um, maybe uh, it's a special, interesting project that we both. Um, follow and uh, support and uh, so uh, and I, I have the same feeling with my students so it's it's uh, really uh, how to um, support uh, the the uh, next uh, generations uh, either whether it's family <coughs> family or it's uh, in general you know uh, mm -hmm. so but uh, I think there is a lack in this um, in this um, uh, field of uh, in the fine arts and uh, this of course belongs to this whole attitude that was for centuries before that there was a ma it was a very male attitude and they had not this idea with their uh yeah, the male uh, the male macho attitude or the male uh, is it now no, it's easier not the macho it's a genius you know this uh, this uh, genius yeah <laughs> It's a cult of the genius and a genius uh, for generations, uh, you know, it's, it's not. Uh yeah, but this is now, this model of the male genius now really collapsed, I would say. I How hope do you so. see it? <laughs> How do you see it, Paula? Is it an issue for you? Well, uh, I mean, I guess all the ideas uh, that arose through theories, theories like feminism, definitely um, one has to take into account that the whole question of the genius becomes a little bit, bit ridiculous nowadays. Um, but there are strategies within feminism that definitely uh, are able to question in general um, power structures that organize societies and of course um, genius the idea of the genius is, uh, I don't really take it serious. <laughs> yeah, because women don't ask themself, themselves to be geniuses. They don't define themselves like that. That's sort of interesting, I would say. I think it's also a question of um, an understanding of um, your concept of art, whether it is um, based on because you can't do anything else than and express yourself, or because you also have certain issues you want to, to get across through uh, the means of, of artistic language. You are right. I think uh, in y uh, now it's more about communi communication and it's more about dialogues and, and the interactive um, is, is much more important, has, much, has become much more important than the soul, um, the, so the, the lonely artist. Uh, so this maybe uh, makes, an, uh, makes a difference. Uh, <coughs> I think, uh, I, yeah, <coughs> I think um, um, with the death of the author and, you know, all these uh, famous Bart um, theories, I think with the, with the shift to the media, um, there was a change. And um, I just come today uh, from Vienna and I'm, I s now um, <coughs> finished teaching in Berlin, and now I um, started 
supporting the teaching in uh, Vienna. So that's very interesting. And I think Vienna right now is one of the best uh, and advanced uh, art academies because <coughs> not of these um, pure artistic classes, but because they have um, a real built up a real center for um, the um, uh, the combined studies of art and theories and um, so uh, this is um, what I support and they have nine professorships there now for theory and all these <coughs> other advanced studies and um <coughs> I think there, the, there is a completely the the the, uh, the idea or the um, the image of an art uh, artistic profession today uh, gets more and more interdisciplinary and um, uh, and so it it developed its own knowledge and uh, it developed its own and this this uh, also this um, uh, uh, relationship with the science and all this so it's uh, it's a real uh, real broad field <coughs> and um, um, I think that this is beside all these elder uh, debates like gender or feminism <coughs> um, it's now um, I, I can't speak yeah maybe Paula can continue she is Okay, then the last question, uh, the very last question. Okay, the very last question um, to you both. Uh, Katarina, what, um, <coughs> Katarina and Paula, what are you admiring uh, from each other? What, what would you like to adopt from each other? I'm quick. Um, her generosity, her courage, and her sex appeal. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I, 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 I can, I, I repeat the same. <laughs> Thank you very much.